Well, it's official. Louis van Gaal has been sacked. The club have announced it. It's all done. Obviously, BBC and Sky Sports said it would happen way earlier. But it's came to light that Louis van Gaal himself wanted the official announcement to be delayed so he could pack, he could get to Portugal and, uh, you know, he'd be out of the way, basically, out of the media spotlight. And the club agreed to that, which is fair enough. Now... A lot of things came to light just before this and obviously it was widely expected and it's finally happened there. There have been some uh, interesting articles which I might link in the description if I remember, uh, I probably will, uh, from The Telegraph and The Guardian documenting what went wrong and uh, how the players... Uh, there were some alarming stories. Uh, I'll get on to them in a sec but the, the statement that Van Hal himself announced is pure class it really is i'm happy the guy won a tournament uh won a trophy in england four countries now he can retire happy he's going to get a huge payoff but uh don't get me wrong he deserved to be sacked and it had to happen if it didn't i would have been very frustrated i don't hate the man i hate what he's done for manchester united in terms of how how he set up his teams to play his stubbornness i mean there are a million reasons why he should have been sacked and thankfully he is but i'll thank him for delivering us a trophy blooding the youth although there were reasons for that but he's still done it so we'll have a lasting legacy hopefully and jose Mourinho can now take the reins when he's officially announced i'll do another video but uh he can take the reins and he can you know deliver success which is what he's done at every club he's been in but aside from that Van Gaal as I say in his statement pure class thanked the club uh, never slated it once he uh, he thanked Ed Woodward he said he'd had the best relationship in a club ever that he's ever been to he'd never had so much support especially when he wasn't hitting the objectives he thanked Sir Alex Sir Bobby um, he, th he thanked the fans said they were the best in the world, obviously, whether he actually truly believes that, uh, we'll never know. But he said it countless times, and you know, fair enough. It ju it was a classy statement, and I appreciate that from Van Hal. He's went out, and he's went out a winner. So now he he'll retire, and uh, as I say, Jose will come in. But it it needed to happen. I mean, the amount of nil nil draws we had. Um, we've scored the lowest amount of goals. I mean, there's so many statistics that just are alarming for a club of Manchester United stature. We scored one more goal than Sunderland, who finished 17th. It's just ridiculous. If we didn't have as good as a defensive uh, as we did, and thankfully, you know, Louis van Halen managed to organise that. That was one of his uh, pros, I suppose. But he just was so stagnated in his beliefs. And I'll get on to what the article said. There's one alarming thing, and I just don't understand why, but it makes total sense. And they use an example as well, um, that Louis van Gaal didn't want his strikers shooting when the ball came into the box first time. He wanted them to take a touch. Now, it sounds just... What? Like, what? what? Why don't you want them to shoot? But it makes sense. If you go back to the Spurs game, opening day of the season, Rooney gets a really easy ball that you expect him to slot in, takes a touch, takes another touch, and then Walker, thankfully, slides it in for an own goal. But it, it was just dumb decisions like that. He was very, very stagnated in his beliefs, and it was hard to change him. Although he said that the players could come to him with anything... It was very difficult for him to change his ways. I'm going off the articles, of course. I don't know this personally, but I believe it because it makes sense. And the articles came out at similar times, indicating that both had the same source that was talking to them from within the club or sources. So I think it's truthful. And there was another one saying within this article that... The, the, this this is honestly huge. Like um, originally, Van Hal at the end of a game would uh, crucify players. Literally, he he the day after the game, uh, he'd pick out, out all their faults and he'd scream at them. He'd literally embarrass them in front of everyone, and it was lowering team morale. So Wayne Rooney and Michael Carrick told him, you know, C is there another way we can do this? And obviously, that was documented. I think that was. November, October this year, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, there was reports about that, and what happened after that is that Van Hal would uh, put all these videos, he'd, he'd literally get videos, he'd uh, write all their faults, etc, and he'd send an email to the players, and apparently it got to the point where the, the relationship was like so bad between the players and... Um, Van Hal that some of them didn't open the emails so he had to insert a tracker on the emails 
to make sure that they'd been open. So apparently some players went as far as to leave their phone open, uh, open the email, leave their phone for 20 minutes so the tracker would document that they've looked at it for 20 minutes when in reality they hadn't. And yeah, it just seemed to be very, very negative, the atmosphere, apparently. And that's why a lot of things were subdued. You look back at one of his first press conferences where I think he, he openly said to the press in one of his first ever press conferences he doesn't want players to use their own initiative which is why he, he keeps shouting he kept shouting out for creative attacking wingers but it seemed as though he shackled them he didn't want them to do that apparently another main tactic which we've been shown hundreds and hundreds of times during his two-year tenure was um tenure is that how you said anyway uh is when the the winger would be encouraged not to take the man on, wait for the overlapping run from the fullback, and then the fullback would try and work a, a pass in or something. So it seems as though the club was very disjointed. One thing that made me laugh, though, in one of these articles, I think it was from the Mail, actually, is um, the players <laughs> will approach Mourinho uh, and try and get him to uh, lower Ed Woodward's commercial demands because apparently after we lost 3-2 to West Ham the very next day, the players were called in early morning and uh, were made to drive miniature Chevrolets around the uh, the Carrington car park or Old Trafford car park. I don't know where it was, but probably Carrington. But yeah, uh, that just sounds ludicrous. And uh, one final thing about Van Hal, uh, right at the start of his uh, reign, when we went on the tour, apparently there was a really, really strict... Um, 8.30 a.m. till 10.30 p.m. Uh, like day planned for the players and uh, he changed the hotel to make sure it was closer to the uh, to the tour. He wasn't happy with it being far away even though it was a luxurious hotel and all this. And then they had double training sessions and it ended with like a slice of toast for supper. Like Everything was so strict. They, they had to go back to their rooms, then report for training, then do... Uh, some tactical video analysis or something. It just seemed like really, really shocking to be honest. Like how how strict Van Hal seemed to be. Obviously, believe it if you don't. But um, aside from that, obviously the big the big talking points, the big positives for Van Hal. He's blooded youth. Uh, he's at least signed someone successful in Martial. No matter how lucky he was with managing to keep De Gea, he's kept De Gea. Thankfully. And we've won the FA Cup. So, you know what? Lou Van Gaal leaves as much more of a success than David Moyes. But one thing I will say, I'd say the Moyes uh, era was more entertaining than this one. But another positive I haven't mentioned, and uh, it's it's kind of a bit harsh. I should have mentioned this before. Big games in terms of Manchester City, Liverpool, he's got a fantastic record. So, in, in that regard, of course, he did better than Moyes. I just generally think this season has been the dullest season i have ever witnessed so if he'd have kept his job there would have been outrage but he hasn't so now we can move on we've won this trophy we've got youngsters let Mourinho come in let him spend the money um that we need because this this squad isn't good enough to compete for the title and that's what we want to do so although we've got youngsters and everything we need depth we really lack depth so there's rumors of zlatan joining that would be fantastic a couple of other players and then hopefully we've got a well-rounded squad that can compete for multiple honours. Well, I say multiple honours. We've got the Europa League, obviously FA Cup, Cup to One Cup, uh, and the Premier League. So we'll see what happens. But Jose Mourinho in, Louis Van Gaal out. But fair play to Louis Van Gaal, and I wish him well in retirement.